Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by NetEase and if you want to know what that means in terms of how trustworthy my content is, then please do check out the link in the description down below to my Discord. There is a public press release there that will give you all the information you could want to know regarding that. Now in previous videos I've discussed various different game mechanics and we've had a brief look at some of my favourite ships. What I want to start doing in Infinite Lagrange a bit more is actually doing deep dives into a particular ship hull and looking at its different variations. Now obviously this is going to depend on what ship hulls and variations I actually have readily available, but if you've got a particular hull and variation you would like to hear me talk about, please do let me know in the comment section down below. I know a lot of Infinite Lagrange content creators are doing things like tier lists, um, where they talk about cruisers or destroyers in general, and all the different types of ships that you can fit in there. But I don't think anyone is doing deep dives into specific ships, and it's something I've enjoyed doing in Ebeco, so it's something I would like to do here in Infinite Lagrange as well. And if you enjoy this or find it useful, please do let me know by commenting down below and hitting like on the video. It seriously really does help with the outreach on these. Anyway, in today's video then, we're going to be having a look at the Antonius Consortium Winged Hussar. All three variations of this ship. This is one of my favourite destroyers in the game. It's readily available to most people fairly early on. There are some crates that you can get when you first start a new campaign um, that have a very high chance of dropping the Winged Hussar. Um, it's a great destroyer. Um, it's been one of my firm favourites for a long time, and I'm just really excited to get to talk to you all about this in this particular video now that I've got all three variations of it, and I can just sit there and talk through each different type. Now, first of all, then, we have the Winged Hussar Light Missile Destroyer. This is the anti-ship type. There's also an integrated type and an anti-aircraft type that we'll cover later on. Check the timestamps down below if you want to jump to one of those in particular. Now, the Light Missile Destroyer, the anti-ship type, of course, as you would expect, has a fairly solid anti-ship firepower of 4,720, but it also has a very respectable air defense of 1,433 and a solid siege of one. 1,367. Now the Siege, first of all, that comes from the Carillion K Dual Cannon Bow Siege Cannon here that is right at the front of the ship. You can see this is, does have an attack priority of Destroyer, Frigate, Carrier, Battle Cruiser, and Cruiser, which personally I think is a pretty solid lineup as well. You're getting rid of other Destroyers, which tend to be a strong threat to the, uh, to the Winged Hussar. You're then getting rid of Frigates, which are probably the second biggest threat, before moving on to Carriers. Now not many ships have a high carrier priority, so the fact that this cannon can shoot at those is pretty sweet and it allows you to start taking out those uh, carriers fairly early on into a fight especially in the late game where a lot of other people may not be using destroyers or frigates in their fleet anymore and instead focusing on things like uh, cruisers and battle cruisers and carriers so the fact that this will then prioritize the carrier in that situation is pretty badass it's not bad in the damage type either if we have a look at its upgrades and enhancements, the main thing you might want to look at here is increasing the siege damage. If you're flying the light missile destroyer in your fleets, the chances are that you aren't really upgrading this particular weapon all that much. Um, so adding extra cannon damage doesn't do all that much in the grand scheme of things. But adding that siege damage can be really useful if you're going for city captures. Of course, if you want to upgrade the weapons here on the light missile destroyer, the main weapon system is the storm weapon system, the storm missile launcher nest. Now this is a really interesting weapon system because it has the physical armor penetration stat when the target is a super capital ship which is a battle cruiser or a carrier or theoretically a battleship as well although we haven't seen those yet in infinite lagrange and um, it has a chance to disable its physical armor which is just insanely good what this means is if you're firing at one of those ships it has a chance to ignore any of the armor stats and just deal raw damage which i'm sure you can imagine is huge it also has anti-aircraft range, which means you can counter-attack aerial targets that attack you. There are different flavours of anti-aircraft, as we'll discuss later. This one will only attack aircraft that are attacking that particular winged hussar. It, it just basically it fights back against any aircraft that happen to be attacking it. Now again, the damage on this is a very respectable 2,800 per minute. It's a projectile weapon. It does prioritize small ships, as you'll see here. Starts with destroyers and frigates, then will go for corvettes and fighters if it needs to. Very low siege damage on this, though, here. 
This is where you would start to enhance and go a little bit crazy with the additional missile torpedo damage. Remember, it, even though this doesn't look as much DPM, having higher damage rather than damage per shot does allow you to chip through armor that little bit faster. So if you're going up against heavily armored targets, even though the numbers here are lower for the damage compared to cooldown, you'll see there that going up 2% of missile torpedo damage is a 56 uh, DPM, whereas the 3% weapon system cooldown is uh, 71 DPM. If you're going up against heavily armored targets, that 56 is actually going to reliably do more damage. This one means you're going to be hitting more frequently, but that armor will be absorbing more of it. Um, so it's kind of a hit and miss there. The weapon system cooldown can be useful. Uh, the hit rate and torpedo hit rate, I like going for this one because it works on everything. I'm not as big a fan here of the fighters and corvettes, which is obviously only useful for that anti-aircraft um, firepower. And if you want to take down aircraft, then this is probably not the ship you want to be using for that. Um, so if you're going to be using this, I personally tend to go for that hit rate and torpedo hit rate, then maybe the frigates and destroyer one if I've got the skill points spare. Um, again, there's hit rates against corvette. And then it has the focus cannon fire a strategy which sinks all cannon weapons with the system and reduces cooldown by 80% every 90 seconds for 8 seconds. So it fires for 8 seconds, then there's a 90 second cooldown, then it does it for 8 seconds. Um, we're basically just rapid fires against the same target, so the cannon will be shooting at the same targets as the missiles. Now to me, again, this isn't overly great. It can be useful early on, but again, that target priority on the weapon system here is destroyers and frigates first. And so you'll be sinking the cannon to fire at destroyers and frigates, which eh, I think the big advantage of the cannon on the light missile destroyer here is actually that it does uh, fire against carriers and that. Obviously that's useful later on. Certainly later on, I would not be using that one that sinks the, carry uh, the cannons with the missiles. I'd prefer it the other way around, in fairness, that the uh, missiles get synced with the cannons and start taking out some of the other uh, stuff out there, especially since, as we've discussed, those missiles get that physical armor penetration, which is just beastly. Beyond that, the armor system and propulsion system are kind of what you'd expect of a ship of this caliber. Um, the armor is okay on the winged hussar. It's for a destroyer, it's fairly middling to average. The propulsion, again, it's sort of a decent enough speed. All we get is cruising speed and warp speed. There's no evasion or anything interesting there. It is pretty standard. So, it's a brilliant destroyer to have early on. Great damage output, versatile against a lot of different targets, good anti-air and siege as well. So if you're going up against some cities and you want to take out some stuff and you're not sure what's in there, the light missile destroyer is a great option. Then we'll go to the anti-aircraft type. This was the second type that I opened. Now you'll notice here that the firepower stats, we still have a fairly respectable anti-ship fire, but the air defense has shot through the roof, and there are some really nice reasons and advantages for this. First of all, if we go into the storm missile system, which before was the one that had the anti-aircraft range, it now has anti-aircraft support, which can provide anti-aircraft support to the same row friendly ships. Now, if we come back out and we have a look at the area denial anti-aircraft version here, you'll see this is a front row destroyer. Having a couple of these, one or two of these, in your front row means that they will basically protect anything else in your front row from aircraft. So if you're using things like Corillian Specials or Corillian Recons to tank, for example, um, and they're struggling to deal with enemy aircraft, which they can, enemy aircraft typically are pretty good at uh, dealing with evasion targets, um, then the storm missile system here on the area denial anti-aircraft destroyer winged hussar variant will take those out. It basically tanks for the tanks, if that makes any kind of sense. And I do tend to have one or two of these in my fleets when I'm using tanks in the front row, um, just to help deal with aircraft. Even later on, if you're using something like an ST-59 uh, battlecruiser in the front row, having a couple of these uh, winged hussar um, anti-aircraft types in that front row with it just helps deal with any aircraft craft that might otherwise be a problem. Now the storm weapon system itself, as I said, we've got very respectable anti-aircraft fire on this. That anti-aircraft support there is pretty good and it does have both uh, anti-ship fire and air defense. When we go into the uh, the enhancements and upgrades here, the missile and torpedo damage isn't necessarily our main thing here. I'd go for the hit rate, especially against fighters and corvettes, that little bit faster. That's where you want to enhance here if you're going to enhance that weapon system. We then also have the situational awareness system, and this is really cool. As standard, you can see here, the area denial anti-aircraft destroyer winged hussar gets an additional 30% hit rate against aircraft and 30% hit rate against corvettes. 
And then you can up this even further by having the information chain strategy. When your fleet includes aircraft, it increases hit rate against enemy aircraft by a further 30%. And as far as I'm aware, this is additive, not cumulative, so you're looking at 30% additional on top of that, um, which is fairly solid sort of additional hit rate against enemy aircraft. What you're looking at here then means just if you're going to be using this in the front row to help protect your other front row ships from aircraft attacks, just have something in your back row that launches aircraft, whether it's a Predator or a KCCPV 2.0 or something that is launching aircraft, and then put in 15 enhancement points there and bam, this suddenly becomes exceptional at ripping aircraft out of the sky. It's also nice to note that you do have the chance of uh, like reducing the chance of getting hit by guided weapons, which are missile and torpedo systems, um, which just makes it a little bit more survivable. Um, but again, if you're going for the anti-aircraft roll, I would be going for those 15 enhancement points. It's going to get expensive going into anything else. That then brings us finally to the integrated type, and this has become one of my new favourite ships in the entirety of Infinite Lagrange. Again, you'll see here, I've got this upgraded, but we've got a basic anti-ship firepower, which is slightly above what we had here on the standard winged Hussar. It's gone up a little bit higher. I think it actually starts a little bit lower, but it does cap out considerably higher. Um, the air defense, however, and the siege are both considerably lower than the anti-ship type. Despite the fact that it's an integrated type name, which makes it sound like, you know, oh, it's good against multiple targets, what it means here is it has integrated all of its weapon systems rather than being a cannon on the front and a missile system at the back or just an anti-aircraft missile system, it now has a torpedo launcher at the front integrated with that storm missile launcher nest at the back. Now again, the storm missile launcher nest, we've still got that anti-aircraft range so it can attack aircraft that attack you and still have that physical armor penetration. We also then have the torpedo launcher on the front and torpedoes are pretty awesome in that they have the crit ability, which has a chance to deal additional damage to the target. This means that when you look at something like a winged Hussar integrated missile destroyer or indeed certain like CV and um, IO3s, I think it is, and that has the torpedoes on it, the stats can often look lower than other ships of a similar caliber, and you might look at this and go, well, why would I use this when I have the Eris Heavy Cannon variant or the uh, the Quawa Railgun or something like that? That crit chance means that the, the numbers lie to you, basically, especially when you enhance it. One of the first enhancements I went for here is the, uh, the chance to cause 50% crit damage. I then also have somewhere along here, where is it hiding? Um, there's one that increases the chance of hitting a crit, or I might be imagining that, and it's on a different thing altogether. We do have the Focus Torpedo Fire, which is going to be the next thing I'm aiming for here, which sinks all torpedo weapons with the primary weapon system and reduces cooldown by 80% every 120 seconds for 10 seconds. That kicks up a supreme amount of firepower for those 10 seconds and will absolutely melt anything that they're shooting at. Um, you can go for things here like the hit rate against fighters and corvettes, but again, I just think they're a better anti-aircraft. Going for missile torpedo damage is by far the best thing to go for here rather than the additional weapon system cooldown. I've gone for those sort of as secondary skills but the missile torpedo damage it doesn't look as big on paper but remember it means that when that when that torpedo hits it is dealing more damage therefore it is a bigger percentage clearing through the armor whereas you would look like you're getting bigger dpm on paper with the cooldown but there's smaller things that are hitting and less of it will actually clear the armor, resulting in lower actual DPM. Also, of course, the weapon system has a chance of 50% crit damage. That is increased by the damage, not by the rate of fire. So we've got a 50% here of the higher damage rather than 50% of just DPM. And that's it's a bit confusing, but remember DPM is affected by rate of fire, not just the actual damage. So this means that those crits are going to be for even more damage. And this is insane. If I were to come out here and actually showcase when I was running some of these side by side um, with the standard uh, integrated missile destroyers and the standard destroyers, I just need to find where one of these is hiding. I've been doing a lot of killing. Here we are. There we are. Winged Hussar, integrated missile destroyer. I had two of those and I had the light missile destroyer side by side as well you can see that that is actually doing 34.7k on the integrated type and 16.21k on the anti-ship type. And there was a small discrepancy in the amount of enhancement points I'd put in, but not enough to really warrant the fact that the integrated type is doing twice as much damage as the anti-ship type. That's an insane 
difference there. And the integrated winged hussar does insane amount of damage. And this was up against a fleet here um, of some rages um, and a Helios, Boreas, and AC721. So it's against all of the destroyers and rages. I'm fairly early on in a phase three server here, um, having fun with a new alliance again keep swapping unions i keep getting moved between different unions it seems everyone wants to have a bit of the captain benzy cake um but yeah that's basically it when it comes to the winged hussar the original variant that anti-ship type is brilliantly versatile and packs a real punch it's a great destroyer early on in the game the anti-aircraft type, if you're using it to protect your front row from other enemy aircraft, can be very powerful and useful, but the integrated type has become one of my new favourite destroyers in the entire game just due to the sheer amount of damage that this thing can actually kick out. Wholeheartedly recommend giving it a go if you're lucky enough to unlock one of these, and if you do, please let me know how you get on with it. Otherwise, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this ship, and if there's any other particular ships that you'd like to see me talk about in a future ship guide for Infinite Lagrange. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.